Hey guys, so for today's video we are going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Mate 17. Point ten. Now this is the first beta, and uh, I've been playing it, uh, playing around with it on my uh, laptop, my second computer, for uh, at least a week now, and I really like it. And to be honest, I'm not surprised. I mean, every new release of Ubuntu Mate is just getting better and better and better. This one is uh, quite a substantial leap forward in a number of ways. So I'm going to try and cover what I can, but I uh, do so knowing that I'm going to be missing out a lot. And part of that is because. As you can see here from this layout, now the layout that I've got uh, that I'm showing to you today is actually in a virtual machine just because it's a little bit easier to record. But uh, yeah, my, my other machine, it's got sort of all my personal data and what have you on, which is probably not the best thing to put out there on the internet. So just for a little bit of personal safety, I'm just running this in a virtual machine. But as you can see, uh, I'm running the traditional, the, the basic desktop paradigm that they've got there as I am on my laptop. And this is the first desktop paradigm that I've ever used on, on Linux back in the Fedora days. I never had a single problem ever sort of getting into it. It always felt very natural. You've got your applications, places, system. Uh, you've got your open applications down there at the bottom, time top left. And, you know, it's easy. It's, it's the easiest interface in the world to get to uh, get used to as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, I... There are a lot of new revelations in regards to like universal menus and um, sort of reenacting the Unity uh, desktop paradigm because, of course, we are now seeing uh, vanilla Ubuntu move over to the GNOME desktop, which is, you know, a lot of people are focusing on that for this upcoming 1710 release. But I mean, Ubuntu Mate have been very, 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 very busy as well. So we're going to cover what we can here today. I've got the website um, up here now. Um, so yeah, you've got all these like slick greeters, global menus, heads up displays, and uh, I'm going to try and get more into those features. Um, but to be honest, it's like everything that I needed was was just a moment away um, with the traditional desktop paradigm. So uh, I will link to this down in the description below. But it's a it's a good piece of uh, of reading if you just want to see uh, where they're at with it. First thing is that one of the more minor criticisms that I've I've had for a while about Ubuntu Mate it looks like uh, it is, is is slightly improved in regards to the choice of the color green. I've always felt it's just a touch too earthy. Maybe just throw in a little blue in there or whatever. Um, but then again, of course, I can see sort of the problems that it might look a little bit too much like Linux Mint or Manjaro or what have you. So it's you know it's and it's only a color as well. But uh, this new the new green that they've chosen for this default background wallpaper is a much nicer green. I really do like that green. So I hope that's something that's that's hanging around for a bit. So. Um, also, they've done the panel layout. So uh, with Ubuntu Mate, you can actually choose using the tweak tool. I don't actually think I've got the tweak tool up here. So I'm just going to uh, go up uh, preferences, look and feel and Ubuntu Mate tweak. So it's, you know, that's that's basically the the easiest way I could imagine navigating the menu. So I usually get rid of desktop icons. Um, you, it's, it's nice. You've got like just the right number of options. It doesn't overwhelm you with the, you know, the nitpicky details that, that KDE and Plasma often do but it gives you what you want um, in terms of customizability and templated layouts and so forth. So I'm on traditional. Um, I'm not going to play around too much with it because when you start clicking this, sometimes you want to like log out and log back in just so it resets the interface and it can jumble the windows around and the universal menu sometimes need um, you to log, log out and log back in or restart programs for it to, to work properly. Um, yeah, so it covers all the bases here. Now, one thing that I do specifically want to point out, it says here down in the panel layouts, is that uh, the fine chaps uh, at Ubuntu Mate actually sent out on their various social medias um, an appeal for uh, and, and surveys to decide what, you know, changing their, their default desktop paradigm. And uh, a lot of people, you know, voted and, and, and fed back. And they talk about that here. And they said, uh, and it says here, uh, but it was the comments from our users that were most compelling. We decided to leave the default alone, a personally difficult decision, and turned our attention to rationalizing the panel layouts and thoughtfully reconfiguring them. Each panel layout is distinctive and now provides a, dis a different desktop workflow. And uh, I, um, I know that Martin Wimpress uh, checks in on these videos, so, um, so I do want to give like a genuine personal thanks, not only just for a fantastic distribution, but for like listening to feedback, like it, it's so often that we see 
um, you see this much more on the corporate side of development, but like you see it everywhere, where uh, organisations will, will like appeal for ideas or appeal for for feedback, and then just sort of not really act on it or not use it to make any meaningful decisions. And I can understand that when you spend a lot of time working on these really nifty features, universal menus, and all that kind of you know, and these these desktop paradigms designed to replace the Unity desktop and all that kind of stuff, that it's so much work, and it's you know, it's 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 far beyond anything that I could ever sort of hope to understand properly. And then to sort of just sort of you know keep the steady course of the traditional desktop layout, that require that must require a great deal of like solid sort of lateral thinking and. And, and a sort of like, uh, yeah, like it's. A, I think it's a you know it's a genuinely a, a you know it's, it's, it's. I think they made the right decision, truth be told. But I so, certainly appreciate that it was not an easy decision to make, and um, and I just want to say thank you for for genuinely listening um, to to everyone's feedback and making a meaningful decision on off the back of that. And you don't see that very often, so I just think that that should be noted. Um, and particularly thank you to to everyone involved in this because this is this is this is an absolutely fantastic distribution. Um, so you've got the the global menus here, and uh, yeah, as I said, like I'm uh, a lot of these newer features. Are, I often find um, that since I've grown comfortable with the traditional stuff, this is this is you know not stuff that I'm particularly looking towards. But like I say, uh, it might be time that I actually gave some of these a spin. Nice to see the super key getting a bit of love as well. Um, I think is it XFCE that actually does have quite good. Uh, just allows you to map the super key. But even even with uh, KDE, they've traditionally had a problem with um, uh, attaching stuff to the the super key. So um, so it's nice that that's uh, that's heading up. Uh, the heads up display. I've seen that. Um, I've seen like YouTube videos and 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 and, and people absolutely adore this. And, and a lot of people have said that this is the thing that they'll miss most from Ubuntu. Going over to GNOME. I don't know if they intend on implementing that into GNOME, but uh, it is implemented here, so that's pretty damn awesome as well. So most notably out of this, I took away that they have been tweaking the theme a lot, and I, I have noticed that it just comes across as being a little bit tighter, a little bit, a little bit more improved. But then you know it was it was good before, but this is just a you know a solid step forward in you know in terms of improvement. But also added the key bindings, shift and print screen. Not going to do this right now because I don't want to risk. Uh, buggering up my virtual machine here, but that's really useful, especially as someone that takes a, a fair amount of screenshots. I uh, I appreciate that. So yeah, uh, those of you that do follow this distribution, definitely check out this page. There is a lot of good stuff here, and there is a lot of good stuff to come. It seems because we're approaching the next long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is going to be 18.04, presumably. So this is a big release because this is the stuff that, that, that they want to bring out all the new stuff so that it gets a good six months of battle testing before it goes into, you know, server-based distributions. And, you know, when I put friends and family onto uh, Ubuntu Mate, and Ubuntu Mate is still my go-to distribution for friends and family that, that want a Linux box, because it is easy and it's reliable and it works well. So, um, but I always put them onto the long-term support release just because it's easier to maintain. So it is nice that um, the next long-term support release is going to have all these great features, but it's going to be uh, after six months of testing. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I could not sing this distribution's praises highly enough. So let's have a look at the desktop. So here we have the Ubuntu Mate tweak with all of the different desktop paradigms. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I, I think on the last version of Ubuntu Mate um, 17.04, when they and that was the one that was first ported over to GTK3, which was done with surprisingly few issues, which is quite quite awesome as well. But one of the the minor issues is that you couldn't rearrange the icons in the Mint menu that's used in the Redmond layout. Uh, I've just checked that before recording today's video, and you can. So that is fixed. In fact, the... Um, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put Redmond on. Okay. Sometimes It's a bit of a risk. But... Um, but hey, it works, I think. Give it some time to load up. I also like the quick launch icons down at the bottom. It just makes for an easy uh, launch of programs as well. It just, you know, you don't even have to think about it. So... And then this is the uh, this is the Redmond menu. So I quite like it because you you can customize this. You can have recent documents on it as well, um, and all that kind of stuff. I don't necessarily know if if all of those features are carried across to the GTK three version. I think they are though. Um, but yeah. So for example, if you wanted to move calculator down to system monitor, there. Yeah, there you go. It might take a bit of 
So you can move it around. You've got different categories there. I'm just jumbling them up like random now. But yeah, so you've got that. So And that's a very customizable start menu. So And uh, yeah, pretty snappy as well. It's uh, it's not the fastest of the menus. I think the brisk menu is really quite quick as well, as is those um, the two-panel layout. And I know a lot of people uh, are not a big fan of the two-panel layout, specifically because it just takes up too much screen real estate. So I do find the Redmond layout is a good um, alternative to that. Uh, one thing, um, I th I'm, uh, this only applies to the beta, but the version of Firefox is... 50.1.0 so it you don't get the snappiness so on my laptop i that that has um that that because the the new youtube layout is just so badly put together and it just takes so much system resources uh, on the lower versions of firefox you really do notice that so um but on the newer versions and and, and once this hits final release i'm sure that won't be an issue but um um and it is actually they do mention it in uh, they do mention it uh, in the known issues so that's pretty good improvements to the software boutique one of my favorite pieces of software here uh, one of the things that I particularly like uh, is the boutique news so uh, there have been times when stuff has been taken out of the Ubuntu of, of the boutique and stuff's been put in, and it's not necessarily entirely obvious as to why. Well, now it is. So if something is not there that you can expect it to be, they'll give you the package and they'll give you the reason. They'll also tell you stuff that's fixed. So OBS Studio, I think that that's appeared on the fixed list a few times, uh, but I've never had an issue with OBS Studio. So, but uh, it's nice that uh, all this stuff is is kept on top of, and it's not the news. It's like it's it's. It is just nice to have that little feed that you can just uh, click over to just to know what's what. I think, you know, like so many more software um, software stores, you know, and um, package managers need something as, as easy to read and as viewable as this. And then, of course, you've got all of your standard, uh, well, beyond standard software offerings. Uh, the uh, software boutique actually pulls in a lot of third-party PPAs. So you get uh, the latest and greatest version of a lot of software here. Now, it does come with a bit of a caveat. Uh, for example, I think Brave... Um, and I certainly Google Chrome, not to be confused with Chromium. Yeah, I've got Google Chrome here, if you want to watch Netflix. Um, they pull down the third-party PPAs directly from the software manufacturer, which um, is great for getting the latest version and the most well-supported version by um, the people that make the software. However, you are also at the mercy of their servers, and on occasion, when third-party software servers go down when you want to do an upgrade or you know aren't available or are overrun or what have you it can cause some issues unfortunately until snap packages become a lot more widespread and commonplace um that's just you know them's the breaks because you can't repackage all of this stuff into um uh, you know, it, it becomes less supported when you start bringing all of that stuff in-house. So I couldn't imagine a better way of doing this. Uh, Kasha's uh, drop, Dropbox, easy to install, fantastic. That is um, particularly useful. Um, you've got Callbird, Firefox, you know. So you've got, you've got a really good set of software selection here. InSync, that is, as far as I'm aware, the best Google Drive client. I no longer use Google Drive, so I don't use that anymore but in sync um, and I think you do have yeah you do have to pay for it uh, but it isn't too much and it does save you a lot of aggro so you've got a good selection of, of browsers as well you've got opera you've got Vivaldi's in there slack and I mean, it's not a browser but it's you know it's easy there to install you've got the tor browser it's the sync thing there uh, yeah Vivaldi you got wire there so you've got your uh, modern, you know, privacy uh, privacy apps. Yeah, that's a lot. And then um, there are just like fixes, codecs, all sorts. You've got everything here. And to be honest, it's, it's not very often that I need to go out of the software boutique and, um, and, and go into like the command line or what have you. Also, one of the things that uh, Ubuntu Mate has had for a while, and, um, you know, much to my chagrin, I have not uh, picked this up, but they have a pull-down terminal built in, you know, like, as, as part of it. I've been using Quake for goodness knows how long, not knowing that. It's Tilda, um, which is just as good, you know. I mean, a terminal's a terminal at the end of the day, isn't it? You just pull it down, you type the commands in, and it does them. I'm not a particularly fussy as to what my terminal uh, is. Uh, I like it to have tabs, but Tilda and Quake have tabs. 
So, uh, is there anything else there? Well, um, this is just a, an example of what an Electron app looks like. So you can get Skype, the new Skype. That looks pretty good. Um, this is Inkscape. I wanted to try and install an application that was compiled with Qt on a, you know with Qt5 libraries. I think Inkscape is that, but it looks good anyway. As does KeyPass X, which is with Qt4 libraries. Uh, nice, snappy, still works well. So I have not come across a program that does not fit with the theming. Um, the theming has been uh, updated. Uh, let's go and see what our theming options are. Um, look and feel. Appearance. So they do have the ambient dark theme there as well. It is a fantastic distribution, keeps getting better and better, even when you think that it's reached peak performance. Uh, it runs really, really well, ha had no issues. Um, the only, yeah, no, actually no issues with performance. The performance is great. Um, it's the, the fans, the processor fans spin up a lot less than um, with other distributions as well. And part of that is, I think, because of uh, you can... Uh, take some of the load off the processor by using the Compton GPU compositor, which works a treat. So that's very nice as well. The only thing that makes um, the laptop spans spin up, uh, the, the laptop's fans spin up, is Twitch and YouTube, and that's partly down to the fact that it's running the old version of Firefox, which will be updated presumably by the time of release. So that'll be less of an issue, and also because. Um, YouTube and Twitch, just they just they just use all the resources, don't they? I mean, you know, there are other websites that manage to do similar things without uh, nowhere near as much resources, and I don't know what it is, but them them's the bricks. So, all in all, fantastic. It's just going from strength to strength, and I couldn't sing its praises highly enough. Um, really, the criticisms against this distribution as it, as it currently stands is zero, really. I could, I could have a bit of a moan about that slightly earthy green colour, but crikey, talk about a first world problem, you know? So, um, yeah, check it out. I mean, good things to come. Good things to come. Uh, so, yeah, I'd just like to extend my thanks to everyone who's been a part of this distribution. It truly is... Um, it, it's, it's something that I use every single day, reliably. Never let me down. Good up-to-date software. Good, reliable team behind it. Fantastic. 10 out of 10 every time. Um, and that's that's coming from someone that doesn't even give scores. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Go and check it out. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you have been awesome. Take care now.